Hey everybody, and welcome back to Dicing with Death. Troll mostly defeated. Troll something mostly defeated. Um, after yeah, you've you've now that you're now that you've done combat with it for a minute or two, you re would recognize it as a troll. You've seen them before in Cintron, and you've heard legends. So um, after um, yeah, so it's looting him though. I want to see if I can't just push his body down, like out into the water flow area to get him pushed down river. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty heavy creature, but you're able to try and roll it a little deeper into the water. But he should um, float, right? He's less dense than water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll buy that. He's floating. Yeah. So you can sort of push him out into the current. And, yeah. Yeah. It gets caught on a, a few rocks downstream, but you go and kick it in again. Okay. Uh, roll a perception check. Uh, where's my perception dice? Plus nine. Oh, God. Fourteen. All right. So you send the troll a sailing downstream. God, I really should have switched my intel and my perception. <laughs> As a rogue, you actually do need pretty high perception. Yeah, yeah, but it also is nice to have those extra proficiencies. Yeah, but it's it's nice to being able to spot trouble before it comes when you are so weak and fragile. Yeah, yeah. with this elven chain and with these with dual wielding, Colnir is actually a pretty pretty capable fighter. Yeah, yeah. Um, Colnir goes back to Michelle, sits down next to her at the remains of the fire, and goes, "Well." I hope that hasn't interrupted your sleeping so much that you won't be able to memorize spells in the morning. What did she do? She cast a spell, right? She cast a spell. Uh, um, and then didn't she may need to sleep in a little bit. Cool. Um, then we rest and go back to our watches and try and pass the night away. Yeah, do you continue um Yeah, we continue our watch continue watches order. as as is. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh roll a perception check for Qualnir. 25. All right. Um so not 20 minutes later, uh you're sitting by the fire looking out at the river and you see a shape emerge from the river just just outside of your firelight. The fire light vision extends to the water. But, Sweet Jesus, what is it? Qualnir uh, um, quickly grabs his chainmail and starts putting it on, um, but doesn't awake Michelle yet. How many minutes does it take to put on chainmail? I actually was just reading this like two days ago. Um, for suits, things like chainmail, it, it says like what, it one round to put on a shirt of chainmail, or yeah. Because it's just a single for heavy shirt. armor. I know it's one round per AC. That's if you want to go quickly. If you want to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, armor. Putting on armor, page one hundred one of the player's handbook. All right, so you're scrambling to put on your armor. Uh, it looks like a humanoid creature crawling towards you. Um, you'd guess maybe another troll. Okay, the time to don armor depends on its make. Those armors that are a single piece, leather tunics, robes, chain mail, take one round, two for metal items to don with slight assistance. Without aid, so the time is doubled. It's doubled to four rounds. Armor that is made of separate pieces requires D6 plus four rounds, again, without assistance. With help, that time, or with, again, with help, without help, that time is tripled. Sometimes characters need to get into their armor in a hurry, and thus are they dressed hastily. This assumes some buckles aren't fastened, seating's adjusted, blah, blah, blah. Single suits can be hastily donned in one round at the cost of one worse AC, though never worse than armor class 2, a bonus of 2. Thus, a fighter could hastily pull on his brigadine jack of AC 4 and change charge into the fray with AC 13. 
hastily donning plate mail, blah, blah, blah. So I could throw on my chainmail suit in a single round and have AC4 provided by the chainmail instead of 5. Okay. Sounds reasonable. So that's what I do. Chainmail is definitely not... It's definitely at least two pieces. <laughs> you need a shirt and pants, right? <laughs> or is it just yeah. assuming chainmail is just a top? I think it's like a top with a skirt. You know, like it's mm. you just throw it over your head. I don't think anyone ha- does. Anyone have chainmail pants? I guess you're right. May- in like a suit of plate mail, you'd have chain and leggings. Yeah, it wouldn't be full chainmail leggings. It'd be leggings between chain certain between areas. The plates, yeah. but. I guess, yeah, I guess that's a good point. It's probably just a really long shirt. I think like a dress shirt that you would tuck in, Mm -hmm. except you probably wrap a belt around it. So in a route, you probably don't have time to tie it off. So it's just dangling loosely, slapping against your thighs or something like that. Something like that. Makes sense. Um, Yeah. Uh, So this this ape-like humanoid is crawling on all fours towards the fire. Um, By the time you've got your chain mail drawn, it's just about reached the fire. Um, uh, Michelle, another, Michelle. Yeah. So yeah, I assume you wake her up in that first round. Yeah. As um, as it's like crawling towards the land, I start yelling yeah, for Michelle. Roll, in, roll initiative. Oh, God. Deep ten plus one for Qualnir. Um, Michelle is gonna do just a dagger, so she gets three. What did you do? Did you you put its treasures in your backpack? Yeah. Okay. So Qualnir at nine, Michelle at three. Um. Michelle, at, Michelle goes first. Um. Okay. Actually. Actually, Qualnir goes first. You don't know what overtakes you, but you just leap at the creature, yes. thrusting your blades into it. Yes, Qualner leaps with a sword. Twenty short sword first. Yeah, you were just, you were overtaken by something. Uh, Twenty is a hit. Is it a crit? Does it clear by five? Uh, it does not clear by five. The last oh, wait, twenty cleared by hold five. On, hold on, hold on. Yes, it does clear by five. Yeah. Eight damage. All right. And so you swiftly plus... jam your short sword into its new its <sighs> shoulder. And a roll of an eight with blood letter. Um, that is a miss. He said, okay. uh, "Wait, eight damage with the short damage. sword." Yes, yes. Where did? How do you get plus five? Oh wait. Oh, that was two d six. Yeah. Critical. Any roll of save versus death. Um, a fail. Uh, roll severity and all that. Severity is three, so nothing significant. Okay, but it's still spewing green blood profusely from its neck. Excellent. Ah, Michelle with her ah, ah, Michelle goes next. She approaches the beast. I think her melee just is just two, yeah. And st- oh, 21 from Michelle! That is not a critical. Oh! High ground because it's on all fours. 22. Uh, no, 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 no. Even okay. on all fours, it's like at your height. All right. I can't uh, think of any. Unless she could circle around for a back attack, would she do that? Probably not. Yeah, because like she's like too. getting between the water and the creature. And yeah, that's, that's near. no good. Um, yeah. Uh, D2, because it's a knife against a large creature. Michelle stabs it for one. <sighs> it hardly seems to notice. Um, and then the creature retaliates, lashing with its jaws. 16 versus AC. Uh, against Qualnir is a miss. He's got 17 AC with his penalty. Nice. Uh, so it misses, it sinks its teeth into your chain mail. Um, you step away from one, from one of its claws, but the other strikes you for five damage. Ooh. Batting you back. Qualnir is limping. Uh, roll initiative. Okay. Seven for Qualnir or, or something. And 
Michelle will. God, where's your character sheet? What are you? Do you have any? Short sword is more than plus one. Oh, but you have dex bonus. So yeah, okay. it's, yeah, it's plus three. Um, fuck. She doesn't have anything that is good. She will cast chill touch on herself. On so. herself? Oh well, I mean, mean chill oh. touch on her hand. She's cast chill yeah. touch and is going to touch the dude. Yeah. So five for Michelle, seven for Qualnir. Okay, Qualnir goes first again. Um, yeah, oh, I mean, I'm you can read into this. that way. Well, you you find yourself. Yeah, you know, I mean, you find your instincts taking over, and you're jabbing it with your short sword. Before another you, nineteen. Before you another realize twenty. What's another critical. Another critical. Good lord. Oh my god. Four damage <laughs> plus magic. These are the shittiest uh, another criticals fail, ever. Roll severity. Uh, one severity. No. Uh, blood letter. Um, eighteen uh, is a hit and a kill. Four damage. How much of creature the HP collapses is? onto the stones? Uh, you gain two HP. Yep. Collapses onto the stone oh shore at your feet. <laughs> I, I look for. I look at its arms. Is it the same creature with its arm cut off, or? It has two arms. Roll a perception check. Whoops, that was a D two. It needs to be a D twenty. No, fifteen. Yeah, it has two arms. Um, same skin tone, same hair color, but it could. I mean, it could be a, it, a sibling, or who knows. Qualnir is about to kick the creature back into the water, and then he pauses, says to Michelle, hey, help me drag this thing closer to the fire. All right, so together you hoist the body in the fire. There's no, 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 we're not drag- putting it oh. in the fire. I drag it near the fire. Okay. Then I take blood letter, and I ram it in the creature's chest, and hold on to the dagger. Um, okay. Uh, nothing beyond what you would expect to happen when you jab a dagger into an unconscious creature. Well, actually, hold Well, on. negative 10 rule, right? Shouldn't yeah, I mean? okay. No, no, yeah, totally. Uh, roll for damage. Yeah, you can't actually drink it dry. Three. That's another one HP. Yeah, uh, okay. And five. Hold on a sec. Okay. Um, gain two HP. And three. Yeah. Gain one HP. And three. <laughs> no, five. Um, you, so you stab it in one last time. Mm. Uh, you don't. You do not see the gem at the end of Blood Letter's hilt glow. The familiar red glow when it drains life. So you assume that you've sucked this creature dry. I look at Michelle and I say, "Now wait." And I sit back, and I watch it for like a minute, two minutes. You leave blood letter in, or do you? Yeah. Uh, no, no. I, I take blood letter out, and I kind of okay. sit there and watch it for like two minutes, and then I stab it again. Okay. Um, the body remains lifeless. You go to stab again, and you gain no HP. Okay. Ah. Oh. I look at Michelle, oh, this was supposed to work differently. Um, well, I take out the dagger. I'm going to try one more thing. And I'm going to hold on to it and ram it into the creature's throat and then just kind of hold on to the dagger for a few minutes, like five minutes, ten minutes. I'm just going to like hold on to it in the body. Probably like occasionally like jamming it or slice, pulling it out or pulling it out. Just like make it doing a little bit of damage every few seconds. Just like a little. Yeah. All right. So this body smells awful. The blood doesn't smell great either. You're making a huge mess in your campsite. Um, and it doesn't do anything that you wouldn't expect a dead body to do when you stab it. I was really hoping that the troll would just be regenerating life and I could sap it, its it, life forever. It doesn't seem to be regenerating. Interesting. Well, I shrug, and 
I don't want to... I can't burn the body. I'd need to build a pretty big fire to burn the body. Yeah, and judging by the smell of it dry, you're imagining that if you set it on fire, or I guess it's wet, but judging yeah. by the smell of it as is, you would you imagine it would get pretty disgusting if you set it aflame. Uh, I roll the corpse It doesn't, it doesn't away. appear to be regenerating. Okay. I, I roll the corpse just like a few feet away. Um, still stinks. But still sure. stinks. And I actually go and make a separate smaller fire like right next to it. Okay. So that way, even like no matter what happens, there's like a light coming from the, the troll area, like just on the other side of the, the, the dead body. And then yeah, I will keep sure. watch, kind of watching it while we do our thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's almost time for Michelle's watch. Do you just have, do you switch off right now? Or do yeah, you... yeah, we'll switch off and she can watch over the body okay. and the surrounding area. Yeah, so the body doesn't do anything. It's not regenerating or coming back to life. You, you've never done battle with a troll, so maybe the rumors that the legends are not true. Maybe they don't regenerate. Yeah. Who knows? Um, Michelle takes her vigil, watches over the, over the corpse. Same, nothing happens. Um, she can she roll a perception check? What? Uh, yeah. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah, she notices nothing unusual about the body. Is okay. dead, and no other activity in the surrounding area beyond the usual jungle noises. Okay. Um, and the rest of the night passes uneventfully. Um, if you want to memorize spells, Michelle sleeps in a little later. Yes. She's able to do that. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, um, the troll corpse is still laying there, stinking. She's going to get insatiable thirst one more time. She's going to keep friends, color spray, and she's going to change to... No, she's going to change friends, friends to change self. Let me just double check change self to make sure I know what it does. Perfect. I'll take change self. And head towards where I last saw the ruby mine. Yeah. Um so you it's i mean it's in the jungle there's no trail or anything do you head up so i mean so how do you approach this do you just step um, into the trees and start hacking your way through i roll my head back and forth for a little bit thinking this is where we were before when the toslo came and i start looking for signs of that we were here last time like are there any arrows in the trees or Weapons yeah. lying about. Roll an appropriate skill check. What do you, what do you suggest? I would say perception is the only thing that makes sense here, sadly. Sure. I was thinking of asking for wisdom, but I thought that might be cruel. Like a non-proficient tracker check. But perception. Oh, yeah. My Well, my tracking check, even if I was pers- uh, proficient, would be negative two. So mm-hmm. a non-proficient tracker check would be like negative seven or something yeah um what is does michelle do anything similarly she's never been to the ruby mine so she doesn't know where to go she will make an intelligence check trying to find for signs of recent passage i guess that would be a willpower a wisdom check then yeah i'll let michelle make an unproficient wisdom check or tracking check which is an 18 which is a fail anyway yeah so there's Maybe 60 feet of stone shore and then just a wall of jungle. Well, um, you see, you see no obvious signs of of life or travel. All right, I'm going to pick plenty of signs the, of life, but no. Yeah, I'm going to look around and kind of go. Well, I think we were headed at this angle from yeah, the shore. I mean, you're pretty sure so... it's somewhere somewhere northeast of of the of the pool. Let's go this way, and if you see any trees that look like they've been recently knocked over in the past month, let me know. Or knocked, cut down in the past month, let me know. Yeah. We're looking so, for do you them. try to travel east along the shore, or do you cut, take a linear path through the jungle? 
Uh, no, I think we're gonna go through the jungle. Yeah. So try and try and guess the straightest path. Yeah. Okay. Um, roll an intelligence check, just Qualnir. Twenty six. Okay. So you you're pretty confident you have the route figured out. Yes. <clears throat> and you, I mean, going through the jungle is is tough moving. Uh, do you use your weapons to cut a path, or do you just try and do you respect them too much to use them to chop foliage? Um, does Qualner have his? Uh, Qualner's not a very respectful person. He'll use his magical short sword to hack away the bushes that are too tall in front of him. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, you you wouldn't expect a short sword to be the tool for the job, but this thing it just like slices through the air, like it's less airy than air if that makes sense like a hot knife <laughs> if you butter. can imagine if you can but even faster I mean, but if even you can, faster what, what could what material has less resistance than air it's almost like the a air vacuum. like suck suck yeah it's like a vacuum is pulling your sword through the foliage it's fun and despite its small size it does some decent damage to the to the trees sweet all right we hack our way as best as we can towards the ruby mine Yes, yes, you do. Um, and with the aid of your weapons, you make quicker time than you would otherwise. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Roll a perception check for both of you. That's Qualnir. That's Michelle with whatever shows up. Oh, Michelle, critical one. Wall near 28. Yeah. Um, so, Qualnir, so you've been walking through the jungle for um, maybe an hour, cutting your way through. Um, when you hear movement or something to your, to your left, to the north, it mm -hmm. sounds like something else. I mean, it's something making a similar noise to you, just crashing through the jungle. Do you um, I, stop to listen? Or I do you stop keep... and pull Michelle down and crouch in the tall grass. It's not, I mean, it's just like, it's thick jungle. Okay, well, crouch Far below. Head, so it's not, yeah. yeah, crouch below whatever There might. is no below. There's like trees up, up, up. Hundreds well, then what am I hacking with my short sword that's in my way? The vines and things that are in, in yeah. your way. or the whatever. Yeah. We get lower to the ground to reduce our profile. Sure, sure. Um, and I say, shh, listen. Um, and then we both roll it to tech noise. I mean, it's it's obvious. Yeah. I mean, you passed your perception check. You could hear you can hear movement, like foliage being crashed through, mm -hmm. um, and you can hear voices. Qualnir's got a detect What's... noise of twenty five, and Michelle has a detect noise of fifteen. Give it a go. See if you can make out what they're saying. Okay. No, Qualnir has a detect noise of twenty. He gets a 74, and Michelle gets a 27. Neither of them are successes. Okay, so you can hear muffled voices through the foliage, but can't make out what they are. or you, They sound masculine, but even like the language is, sort of, is tough to decipher. Qualnir nods at Michelle. She nods back at him, and she casts Change Self on herself to make her look mm. like a knoll. Can you change race with that? Yeah. Spell? I didn't... Dang. She look like a male turns to look like a male mole. One foot shorter or taller, thin or fat, or in between, human humanoid or any other generally man shaped bipedal creature. Um yeah, she so will she's able to add a foot. Add a foot, a gain some weight, become a man, and look like a knoll. knoll. How does she feel about inhabiting the body of this knoll? <laughs> I think for her it's a fun little adventure. All right. Um, does she transform her equipment into herself? Yes. Like what, what is she wearing now? Like does she... Um, she is now wearing whatever she saw one of the men... Yeah, so like... What, a... No, no, no. She... No, you cannot duplicate specific can't... creatures. Yeah. So she'll look like whatever one of the guys standing around Hogar's room looked like. Yeah. She does also have a disguise proficiency. So not in this particular instance, but I would uh, 
be willing to work with you if she is trying to do more than, I mean, so to use that spell in conjunction with the disguise proficiency seems totally reasonable to me to be able to imitate a specific person. Okay. Do like However, that. not after, like, I mean, she would have to, you know, go shopping for whatever disguise, whatever oh, yeah, it would take clothing that they would wear, take preparation. Yeah. But, so her glance at Hogar is not enough to imitate him, but. Yeah. Okay, and, and with that, she starts waiting. Does she make a fake weapon for herself? Uh, no. No. Does she? Okay. Um, she will start wading through the jungle mm -hmm. in the direction of the voices. Yeah, so maybe 20 feet off to the north, you step into actually a fairly well-worn pathway. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, traveling roughly east-west, and Michelle sees off to the west uh, the backs of two, uh, a single knoll, and, uh, no, sorry, two knolls, and uh, several humans. I actually need to roll away. for duration of the spell. How long? It's 2d6 plus two rounds per level, so 2d6 plus ten rounds. Okay. She's level five? Mm-hmm. Cool. 16 minutes. Okay. All right. Okay. So seeing the backs of the gnolls, she will let out a Arr! noise to get their <laughs> attention. Uh, they turn. And she goes like, shh. And like runs back towards where Qualnir is. Through the, through the jungle. Uh, all right. Uh, the gnolls bark something at her in Nolish or whatever their language is called, she which she wouldn't understand. Yeah, they, right, they right. come running after. Um, Qualnir is hiding, is looking for cover. Any sort of thing that could give him cover from someone approaching the, from the direction Michelle is approaching is great. A tree, mm -hmm. a bush, a big rock, a pit, um, some tall grass, whatever. Whatever can be used as cover. He's going to try and grab some cover. Uh, and then Michelle like runs past him, mm -hmm. like with the this beckoning, uh, and Qualner is going to wait for the the gnolls to go past, and then he's going to come up behind them and backstab them. Okay, um, a single knoll goes past. Qualner goes for it. All right. Um, Plus surprise is what a total of. Uh, you don't get surprise actually. Get, he doesn't get surprise. Doesn't get surprised. What? You always get a roll for it. I mean, you get bonuses. Yeah, I'm just. Thing. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> you still, I mean, you can still get like back, back attack, attack yeah. damage and all that. But... Yeah, yeah. D twenty plus one, it's... three, four. Because two for back attack. Oh God, a six plus magic. <laughs> Whiff. Whiff. All right, um... and blood letter coming up behind it. Five, six, seven, for a seventeen. I think that's a hit. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you want to give that backstab damage or not because it was um, not the first attack. Is that usually how it is? Only the first attack. Uh, there's no. It. Yeah. yeah I'll I'll give you backstab damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shit. He was oblivious to the. I mean, you missed so horribly. He didn't even notice you were stabbing at him. Okay. Uh, it's R three D four plus two. Eight damage. No. And all right, the creature lets out a ah and flails its arms awkwardly. Roll for initiative. Okay, but I do gain four life, right? Uh, yes, you do gain four life. D10 plus one for Qualnir. D10 plus three for Michelle. All right, Qualnir goes. Okay. Uh, is the creature's back still to me, or has it turned around? Its back is still to you. Nice. D20 plus 3 for short sword, 18. Uh, hit. Uh, I take it no backstab damage on the short sword now. No, he knows you're there. <laughs> 4 plus magic. Yeah. All right, that is enough to finish the creature who slumps to its knees. Okay, and then Qualnir in the mud. turns about to look down the path to see if there's another one following. Um, or, yeah. your vision is slightly obscured. 
um, through the trees, you can see the shapes of humanoids off on like the, the footpath that they were using. Okay. But, but if you can't, you can't exactly make out what's going on. If he can't spot one exactly, like see one well, he will drop to all fours um, okay. and get low. All right. Uh, Michelle is up next. Okay. Um, Still disguised as a knoll. Uh, uh, Michelle uh, will yet let out a a yip as close as possible to a knoll yip. Yeah, you know, it's like a <laughs> um, and make, her voice doesn't actually change with the oh god no the spell god no. so it's a quite a feminine yip. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, and then just kind of thrash around in that area. Um, all right. Um, Qualnir sees the knoll poke its head into your little path you've cut into the jungle from his path. And looking around, uh, he doesn't immediately spot you. He appears to be holding a rope in his hand that is tied to one of the humans. Does and Michelle sort of, see it? He shouts, uh, he shouts into the jungle, presumably to his friend. Uh, is Michelle in line of sight? Michelle would probably be standing more or less It'd above be... Quilnir. Okay, uh, so so the creature can see her. It yeah. would be pretty easy for her to step step into a bush or something like that. No, no, she wants to okay. remain seen. He she barks something at her, <laughs> points down, and then reaches down and like lifts up one of the like tries to pull the knoll's arm up so that she can see that she's got like a knoll's body here below him. Um. The knoll barks at the humans, stay put or I'll eat you alive. And then he trounces into the jungle towards you. Michelle starts moving away from Qualnir again and gives him like a kick to get back behind cover. And Qualnir tries to line up behind the tree. So uh, I'm just going to doodle on this map if you don't mind. If Sure. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm going up by the bloody spires so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, if this is the tree that Qualnir was hiding behind, let's say the gnolls were coming from the, the top of the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, if last time he hid here, and now there's like a dead knoll, um, I don't know how to... A dead knoll here, at where the square mm-hmm. is, Qualnir will actually move to the, side of the, the other side of the tree as he hears the sound approaching. So as mm-hmm. the the knoll approaches, he's going to try and slide around to the other side of the tree. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not like go. there's just one tree. Imagine, I mean, it's pretty much thick, impenetrable jungle. Yeah, but he wants just to like re- burrowing through. He wants to remain so, right next to this body. So yeah, that's, stands on the same fine. side to avoid view, and then as the other knoll comes into comes down, he rotates around the tree uh, to come up from behind again. Yeah. That, that's, that's fine. That's but I was just getting across. It's not like there's one tree you were hiding behind. It's like of course. thick jungle. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's fine. Um, he is um, speaking at Michelle, um, probably getting increasingly more irritated that he's probably asking, that he's asking questions and she, that she's not answering. She puts the finger to the okay. lips and goes, Shh. Eventually he gets the hint. Um, he steps past Qualnir. Go ahead and make your attacks. Um... Are there any surprise bonuses I should be aware of? Mm-hmm. Uh, surprise modifiers. Ambush. ambush, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, so that's oh, that's enough okay. that you do get surprise this time. So a surprise bonus is AC. He gets a penalty of one to his armor class, and I think I just get plus two for back attack. Yeah. Yeah. So 13 plus magic against a slightly reduced armor class. Uh, 13 plus magic is enough. Six damage with the shorts. Oh, no. Back attack. I'm sorry. That's another 2d6. Seven and six. 13 damage total plus magic total. Yeah. You just shove your short sword through the back of his neck and it 
cuts all the way through and protrudes from the other side. Excellent. Collapses uh, to a heap almost immediately. Qualner takes a moment to examine their waist. Do they have any Here bags that look like they might contain wealth in them? Um, like they could conceivably contain wealth. Like, are there any bags? Yeah, or pockets? yeah. There are. There are. There's a pouch at each of their waist. Qualner will pilfer through it for some uh, monies. Yeah. Um, one of them has six silver. The other has four silver and an uncut uh, ruby. Cool. Can I mix that with the uncut ruby that I got from the trolls, or should I mark it separately? Sure, they'll be the same value. Yeah. They look, yeah. they look similar. Cool. Um, you hear some thrashing coming from the footpath. Uh, Michelle proceeds towards the footpath. Qualnir takes up position behind whatever cover okay. he's been using. All right. She steps into the footpath to see four humans uh, uh, actually running like hell down the path the other direction. Uh, all, is this direction north together. or south? Uh, it's west. West. So okay. they're running along the path. <laughs> she smiles and growls after them. <sighs> They run like hell and don't look back. Perfect. Okay. I don't know how much time uh, she has left on her spell. Total was 16 minutes. That was... Yeah, so it's only been like th three or four. Four or five minutes, yeah. Um, they, they gather their gear and proceed in the direction of the... Uh-oh. Do they go east or west? Are the slaves running to the mines, or are they trying to run free from the mines? I think the slaves are going to run free. They're not going to run towards the mines. That'd be ridiculous. We head east on the path. Yeah. Um, so you yeah, follow this path. It seems well-worn. I mean, it's not big, and like the, it's not a wide path, and it's just basically wide enough for one or two people to walk side by side. But it looks like it... Someone's been using this path a fair bit. Presumably the gnolls. It smells like wet dog. Okay. Um, about five minutes later, so you still have six minutes left of Michelle being a gnoll. Um, uh, this, the path uh, leads into a clearing. Um, bordering the clearing are some of the largest trees in the jungle. Mm -hmm. A tower overhead. And in the center is a rock cave. Nice. Protruding from the, from the jungle floor. Its wide mouth opening is facing you. Um, and leaning against the side of the cave is a knoll sleeping and snoring loudly. Perfect. And with that, um, let's go to our second break. Okay. Well, you guys heard the DM. We're taking a break. See you guys on the other side.